divine prospect. Right. Is this that cat from uh hey if this cat hey I'll be watching these dudes on uh dang I'll be watching these cats on uh anyway some black power dudes and his name is like divine prospect. I wonder if this is the same dude. <laughs> What's going on? Peace and blessings to y'all. Yo, that's you, bro. That's you. You the same dude from Sinead TV? Yeah, man, that's me. What's up, bro? How you doing? Hey, man, let me see your face, bro. Oh man, all right, hold bro, on. Comb your hair or something? Yo, man, what straight, up, man? Straight, man. Yo, the, hey, remember, hey, JP, remember that? Remember I was telling you about brother Polite and them, and I want to holler at them cats. Yeah. And uh, those black power dudes from Harlem or whatever. Yeah. What's up, up man? Pleasure, pleasure to pleasure to talk to you, uh, Divine. You too, man. I, I you know, I've been. Yeah, I watch, I watch you a lot, bro. I watch you guys a lot. That's what's up, man. I've been subscribed to you for some time now, you know, for, for a good minute. You know what I'm saying? I watch your stuff. I keep up with your stuff, man. So man, That's love. Thank you. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So I want to come on here to have a uh, amicable discussion, you know, without all the extraness and just talk, you know what I'm saying, about the scriptures. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, I know you're very respectful and knowledgeable, bro. So you don't even got to, you know, I mean, go ahead. I didn't cut you off. You don't even got to. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm just, I'm just, for everyone yeah. else. I'm just grateful to be on this platform, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, though, I've been watching you for a minute, you know what I'm saying? Um, so the opportunity I had to come on in. So I just wanted to, to build with y'all. So um, the, I'm trying to figure what is the general consensus that you guys have right now is that Jesus is God, the son, the second person of the Trinity, correct? Correct. And you also believe that Jesus Christ uh, was pre-existent before coming into the flesh, correct? Correct. You believe in an ontological trinity, which means there was a relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit before the foundation of the world, correct? Correct. You also believe in an economic trinity. That means that all three work together, and each one had a role in regards to redemption of man, correct? Correct. Okay. The Father is not the Son. Son is not the Father. Father is not the Spirit. Spirit is not the Son, correct? Amen. Okay. So I just want to make sure I lay down a foundation so that I thoroughly understand what your position is, okay, before... Uh, we going a little further. All right. So the 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 uh, chief thing that I do want to ask um, is, do you believe that the king of Israel is considered a god? The king of Israel is con what, what king? Which one? Anyone. Is the uh, king of Israel considered a god? By God or by humans? Hmm? By God or by humans? Just in general. There is no in general. Some people, because everyone's individual. So there's some people that, that would worship them as gods yeah because they're stupid and some people that wouldn't and that's actually biblical some people like some people worship uh king david but you know what i mean they weren't that's that's not what god told them to do so then god would intervene right and tell people do not do no. not do that if that was wrong um not not always not sometimes god doesn't intervene right away sometimes he he, he waits okay so if we go to the book of hebrews chapter one uh y'all got you got the scripture in front of you correct yeah, Let's me one second. I'll pull it up. Hebrews chapter one. All right. Hebrews chapter one. And when you go to Hebrews chapter one, you go to verse eight. Anybody can read that. Verse eight and nine. Hebrews, 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 Hebrews. Yeah. Chapter one, brother? Yes. Hebrews chapter one, uh, verse eight and nine, my brother. All right. So chapter verse 8 says but to the sign your throne your throne god is forever and ever and scepter of your kingdom is a secret of justice you have loved righteousness and hated law lawlessness this is why god your god has anointed you with the oil of joy beyond your companions okay all That's right so stuff. correct now this is a quotation of uh what scripture in the uh hebrew bible or the tanakh are you are you uh no i'm asking you if, if you know oh, do you oh, know oh, oh. Okay, so hebrew, yeah, it's a direct quotation of the hebrew by a verse in the hebrew bible what, what, what's the verse 12 uh chapter yeah. hebrews 1 8 verse 9 8 and 9 Correct. Yeah, let's do it. Psalms 45. There you go. Psalm 45. Uh huh. Isaiah. You, you said Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61, what? verse what? 1 and 3. 89, you said? Oh, wait, wait. You said no, no, Isaiah. No, 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 no. You, you were saying it's quoted in the not. You were saying it's quoted in the not. 
But I'm saying so, that this is also quoted elsewhere, correct? So where, where is it quoted elsewhere aside from Psalm 45? I see here that in Isaiah chapter 61, Isaiah 61, all right, and what yeah, verse? Yeah, yeah, look, look, at that, look at that for me. It says the verse 9 is quoted on Isaiah 61, 61, verse 1 and 3. Just check that out, see, see what it says. Isaiah 61, verse 23? No, 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 Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 and 3. 1 and, and says, 3, okay. And it says Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. It's, oh, wait, 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 let's do one at a time. So Isaiah 61 says, the Spirit of the Lord... Uh, God is uh, is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of our God's vengeance, to comfort all who mourn, to console the mourners. This has nothing to do with that verse. And you said, what's the other one you said? Philippians what? Philippians chapter 2 and 9. It just said right, for whatever what? reason. All right, Philippians 2 and 9. I, I don't know, are you getting that from the TSK, the Treasury of Scriptural Knowledge, or using another source to give you the cross-reference? Uh, CSB. So that's what I'm probably okay. getting. Okay, so it says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in the heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is not a direct, because Jesus, so Hebrews 1 would not be quoting Paul. Right. So Hebrews is mm -hmm. quoting Psalm 45 has nothing to do with Isaiah. So you gave Isaiah 61. That's what Jesus quoted when he was in the temple in the synagogue. Right. So let's yeah. listen to the question. So the question I asked was, was the king of Israel considered a God? Uh, Dore asked a good question, a follow up question. He said, well, to, to man or to the most high. And I said, well, it doesn't matter either. And he says, no, it's important that we know what it is. So that's why I brought you to Hebrews chapter one, because. This has been something being quoted as who is saying. It's like, who is saying what we're reading in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9? Somebody's being quoted, right? There's quotations there. We know those don't exist in the Greek, but there's quotations there for context in the, in the English, right? So who is quoting this? Somebody is saying this about somebody else. When you go to Psalm chapter 45, we get more detail on that, right? Psalm chapter 45 is where this stems from. So I'm going to bring it up right here, and I'll read it if y'all don't mind me reading it, just to kind of set the stage. Because again, just so you know what my position is up front, I'm not trying to. Well, really yeah, kind of, yeah, Hebrews one, the whole chapter, or one what? Uh, no, Hebrews eight on and nine. Eight and nine. Hebrews one, eight and nine. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. All right. So, um, so I don't subscribe to the Trinity. I thoroughly understand the Trinity, um, and that's why I laid it out the way I did first to get you to affirm it, so I don't draw a straw man, right? Um, but I disagree with the Trinity, and I would like to kind of walk with you guys divine, through divine, to explain divine. why, right? Right. So Psalm 45. Divine. Okay. Brother, brother. Right. Sorry, not to cut you off. Can, just, just, so, just for a point of reference. Sure. What do you believe? Are you Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. Are you, do you, do you practice comedic science? Nah, I'm an Israelite. Hebrew Israelite? Correct. Okay, cool. Carry on. All right, no problem. All right, so Psalm 45. All right, and I'm going to read it. Um, if it's okay, I'm going to ask Zora. Is it okay for, for me to read it, my brother? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so it says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever, and justice is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you above your companions with the oil of joy. And if we go to the beginning of this, of uh, Psalm 45, it says, for the choir master to the tune of the lilies, a masquil of the sons of Korah, a love song. Right. So the person that's writing this, if we can, if you read verse one, says my heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses to the king. So Psalm 45, divinely inspired. Do you guys subscribe to the divine inspiration of the text? All Bible is, is divinely inspired. All right. Awesome. And um, Romans 15, four says all things are written a four time written for our learning so that we through the painting and covering the scriptures might have hope. So if we read in Psalm 45, Verse one, and this is what Paul would have been referring to, because these are the scriptures he would have had at that time. And we see this is being written, written about the king. The king is considered a god. Where'd you get that? Well, we just read Psalm 45 and 6, your throne, O God. So when it says your throne, O God, who is it referring to here? Jesus. You said Jesus? So the psalmist who's writing this is writing this about Jesus or about a physical king that existed during this time period it's a prophecy about jesus 
So where do you where do you where do you get that this is a messianic prophet prophecy about Jesus within Psalm 45? Go to Hebrews one. If you read the whole chapter, it tells it, it lays it out. Um, because it, it starts off with hold on, it starts off mm -hmm. with um Hebrews numero uno. All right. Okay, so um, let me close that out. Okay, so, so we're back at Hebrews chapter one now. Yes, sir. All right, so he's just chapter one. I'm just making tea too, so one second. <laughs> what kind of tea is that? Honey, uh, lemon ginger. Lim okay, did you, you said honey. Are you adding honey to it? Yeah, I don't, yeah, honey instead of sugar. Okay, good, good, good. Or you can get agave next time if you want to mix it up. Ooh, I never thought and of that. honey is the best honey to get. Say it again? I got the Manuka, raw. Manuka honey. Manuka? Yes, from New Zealand. Oh, okay. What's Manuka yeah. honey? So it, it has a higher um, antioxidant yeah. and antimicrobial uh, effect. So if you're like sick or something like that, yeah. um, it's good to put that honey in. And it's also good for soothing stomach as well. But agave is another supplement if you want to switch it up and not uh, eat too much honey. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so Hebrews 1 says, um, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers, but by the prophets. Hasn't uh unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom all also he made the worlds. So if we just start from here and read all the way down, if I'll read all the way down, but I know what it says, but we can read all the way down because I'm not I have nothing to do. It's in context. So the context is he's talking about the son of God, and then and then what he's doing is revealing because this is written to the Hebrews. The Hebrews, uh, the whole point of the scriptures was to reveal to the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. So this is this is trying to reach the Hebrews, proving through the Old Testament, through Old Scripture, um, that that Christ is is, is Messiah, and that, that's the purpose of Hebrews, and that's the purpose of this of chapter one. Okay, so Psalms forty five, you're saying that the person who's writing that is writing about Jesus. Um, let's go to Psalm forty five now. Yeah, that's that's what I was just reading. So I was trying to figure out. Where is the uh, the author saying that he's writing about Jesus or that he's even writing about a Messiah? The word branch is not there. The word Mashiach is not there. There's no nothing there indicating that he's writing within that context about Jesus or a future figure. Let me ask you something, Divine. Yes, sir. Does God say, have no other gods before me? Correct. That means face to face with him. Panai is what's with the word there in Hebrew. Hallelujah. So would mm -hmm. God would God put in His Word anything that say to worship other men? To worship other men? Yeah, because by by what you're saying, you're saying if that's if that was true, if the context of what you're saying was true, that means God divinely wrote worship man. That doesn't make any sense. You understand okay. what I'm saying? Well, I, I see what you're saying, but even, even uh, say wait, wait, hold on. so when you say worship, explain what you say worship because you know there's seven words for worship in Greek and Hebrew. So I, I mean I mean not 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 to adore I mean to actually worship to venerate the veneration of a, of a deity. As a deity, you mean in like this is the creator, like man is a creator or something like that? You, no, God is the creator. Oh yeah. No, so, no, no. Okay, I'm, I'm saying when you say worship, you're yeah. talking about worship in the sense where a man is like the creator. No, so the word worship, right, is is adore. It's like one word means to adorn, right? This is also ad adoration of a, a deity. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that I believe that would, depending on, I, I, unless you can show me in the Bible where God says worship and he's not talking about, you know, um, pro prostrating to a deity, mm -hmm. then you okay. have to, I think everything in the Bible uh, that, that, were, that, that points to worship is filling, you know, expression or reverence for uh, adoration for a deity. Okay. So then go to First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20. Okay. 29 29 verse 20 yes yeah, so that's where they they worship david right we have about to read it okay mm -hmm. then david said to the whole assembly blessed be the lord your god so the whole assembly praised the lord god of their ancestors they knelt low and paid homage to the lord and the king all right so in Hebrew, no i'm saying that one says homage but i was helping you out because the king james says worship all right, so so let me go there, right? Yeah. So the Hebrew says, "Why Yomer David lachal hakhal baruchu na it Yahweh Elohecham? Why baruchu kal hakhal Yahweh Elohei abotehem? Why yichadu 
Wayistahawu Yahwe Walam Malek. Now the key word there. We are 2920? Hold up, huh? That's 2920? Yes, I'm reading it in Hebrew. Yep. So so the key thing here it says, So blessed is your God, Elohechem, mm -hmm. all the assembly, Kal Hakahal, Yahweh, Elohe, Abotahem, the God of your fathers, why yikhedu and bow their heads. And this is in the cow consecutive imperfect. That means it's a simple action that is about to take place and prostrate themselves. Why yistahawu, which is the hikpaya, which means in a reflective sense, right? Homage. And, so wait, 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 to Yahweh, and then you have the conjunctive wav, way, lam melech, and the king, meaning that the syntax between Yahweh and the king, that means the two actions, why they do, and why yistahawu are being done both to the king and Yahweh. Why was this not corrected? What is going on here? Why are they bowing down and prostrating? If you look at that, those two same words elsewhere, it is being done towards the creator. But now they're doing the same thing towards the creator and the king. And if you read the next verse, nothing is shunned. It's, it's I like it. Yo, this is so cool. I used to, I watched this guy say this to other people. Now he's saying it to me. Go ahead, Devon. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the door is crazy, man. The only point I'm trying to make, and again, I'm not here for contention. I just want to build with you, brothers, because y'all know your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just simply saying that in this case, at least in this one incident, the same words that's you, that's why I asked uh, uh, Dore, you know, what did he mean when he said worship? Like, because these two words go, if, if you want to go to other verses, we'll see what these words are used for the creator. This is a very unique instance in which the people are doing the same thing towards the Most High and the King, and the people are not shunned for doing it. So the, my, my point is, Yeshua was the call, the, he that's, matter of fact, let's get Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. So we can see why they're treating Jesus the way they're treating Jesus. Matthew chapter two. Brother, verse uh, the, the divine prospect. Real quick, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Sure. So I'm reading verse twenty, but I see here in this version that it says, "Paid homage to the Lord and the King." Let him build. So I, hey, hey, JP, just let him build. Let him build. Uh, okay, go ahead. Hey, so, okay. I, had, I, I had a question, so I just wanted yeah, to. Say, JP, I know. Let him build. Let him build. Don't <laughs> raise like. Let him go. Let him go. We got this. We got this. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so go to go to Matthew chapter two verse two. Oh, you, oh okay. Let me go there. Matthew chapter what, brother? Two and two. Uh, Matthew chapter two verse two. It's the one with the King and the Jews verse. Mm, there you go. You know your stuff. I see that. Yeah, I wonder why the other guy couldn't act like you, divine prosper. He was acting like a complete dog, but you have man. He was an undivine prospect. That's why. <laughs> nah, he, he was, this guy yo, was acting just, like a dog. Yo, yo Dore, you a sit down comedian, man. You don't know that. <laughs> no, but seriously, this is how you disagree with people. You have a yeah. you have a discussion. You know what I'm saying? But right, to right, like, right. yeah, I yeah, I can read it for Dore and his platform. So I, I want to make sure I behave well in somebody else's house. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got, um. I'm home manners, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was raised. Yeah. So well, that's what I'm saying. God bless you for having manners, brother, because a lot of people don't have it, bro. All I right, Matthew that. chapter two. Matthew chapter two, verse two. Yes. Uh, Joe California, you said yeah, something, bro? Oh no, I could read it if you guys want. Go ahead, bro. Read it. All right. Uh Matthew two two says, um Hold on, wait. Let the vine read it, because he's the one that, that, that brought us here. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, read, well, I, I hope you, I hope you don't read in Greek, brother, or in Hebrew, brother. I can read in, I can read in Greek if you want. Hey, yo, me. yo, yo, we gotta. I like to be precise. I don't like all these side conversations. This is kind of serious. So let's, right, let's go do. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So you, I read it in Hebrew, and then I focus in the part in the Greek. Okay. Um, it's it's very simple. Um, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, this is verse one. I'm gonna do verse one first. Um, in the days of Harad the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born of the Jews, uh, born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. Now, what's the key thing here? We see this word, Basilius, there in the Greek meaning king, ton, laudon, which means the Jews, right? King of the Jews, having been born king of the Jews, and they said they saw the star for him. And again, if you study the Magi, you understand why they're coming to do this. And they have come to proceed, can I say, which means to 
to worship him, worship him. So the worship is because he's the king. And that same word there, if you go to the Septuagint, it's aligned with the things that are done to kings in Israel. Are you because saying that Jesus was the king? God's representative of any earth. Are you saying that Jesus was a king? Of course, it, it says it right here. Did he, did he have a government? Yes, he did. He has a spiritual government. And he told Pontius Pilate that, that my kingdom is not of this world. He okay. said, if I wanted to, I can call angels to come here and, and do ABC, or my disciples would fight for me. So, so God yes, he does has, have a government. So, so he has dominion over the angels? Yeshua? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's been exalted to that position. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so what I'm tying in is that the king is also worshipped. He's not worshipped as the creator. He's worshipped as an entity with authority and with power, and he is the direct representative of the Most High's authority here on the earth. So if Yeshua was coming from the loins of David or Dawid, he's here to represent that same authority in the earth. This is why people will come to worship him. Okay. The Magi, if you study their culture, of the MAGA, you'll understand that this is something that is not unusual. This is something that they do when they meet kings. They bow down and they prostrate before. And a matter of fact, if you get the uh, back black the black obelisk of Shalomanzar the third, you'll see Jehu, King Jehu, bowing down to the king and kissing down at his feet. That's an ancient Near Eastern custom that you would do anytime you're in front of a king, dignitary authority, or whatever the case may be. So the bowing down and the worshiping. It's not nothing that's going to be shunned by God because it's something that's allowed because he represents God's power and authority in the earth. Right. So there's nothing unusual about that. So can, can you show me any other scripture besides this David scripture where, where a man is worshipped? Where a man is worshipped? Yeah. And you, you, can't use, you can't use Jesus because we believe Jesus is God because you're taking one. And I'm, I'm going to tackle that. I'm just going to let, let you go. Sure. But you took one scripture, one scripture out of, you know, a thousand of them. Where someone was, where where God didn't correct them for worshiping um, David. However, you know there's multiple scriptures where the Jews were a stiff-necked people and they uh, customarily worshipped other gods. So if we're going to use the Jews as a example, that's a bad example. And if you're going to use that example to say Jesus is not God, that's not a, that's not a strong example either because we we already know that the Jews worship other gods all throughout history. That's how come um, salvation came to the Gentiles. So are you saying that? the Jews are not a good example in regards to their practice of yeah. worship? I think the Jews are a terrible example. And that's why, um, that's why. Was, uh, was Jesus a Jew? So what do you mean? Are you mean the, the tribe of Judah? That's what no, Jews no, are. I'm asking you, was Jesus a Jew? Yeah. You so, said the Jews. So was, was Peter a Jew? Okay, let me say Hebrews. Is that better? Oh, that's fine. I'm saying. So, so was Paul a Hebrew? Yeah. Uh, divine. Don't do that. No, no, listen to what I'm saying, because listen to what you just said, my brother. You yeah. said the Jews oh, are, were, are a terrible example. Okay. And okay. I'm naming you nothing but Jews that, okay. and Hebrews. Listen, listen, brother, listen. If there's, if there's, if there's a, if I, okay, we, we know human language, right? Sometimes right. we say all, and it, it means a lot, right? So mm -hmm. that's exactly that's what I'm saying. Um, the Jews, the Jews that weren't prophets, <laughs> that weren't, didn't have the Holy Spirit, that weren't selected by God, that weren't set apart to do a job like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they were bad examples. Um, that's I don't what disagree with that. I agree with that. that. However, they would use that were not like that. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm saying overall, it's a bad example. In the Book of Kings, the king what did did what the Lord did this did, 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 did what displeased the Lord. He did what displeased the Lord. They were sold into captivity for seventy years because they displeased the Lord and they served other gods. What's the name? Um, the king's eyes was poked out because they disrespected the Lord and served other gods. Um, Jews were burning their own babies, or Hebrews were burning their own babies. Um, and serving other gods. So um, God, God is sometimes God doesn't address everything right away. Just like in the book of um, um, with Sodom and Gomorrah, He said, "Thy sins have reached me, and now I'm coming down." And so that that's how God works. So um, there's nothing in this in that in that particular scripture in, in uh, Psalms that says God was pleased with that. He just didn't correct it in that moment, but He did correct it because eventually they all were punished for serving false gods. So how was Psalm 45 inspired if you're saying that that was bad behavior and God didn't correct it yet? So are you saying that God corrects everything right away? That's not true. Wait, wait I, I never said that. Yeah. What I'm saying is, wait, you said Psalm 45 is inspired. That's even being used to apply to Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1. Mm -hmm. So whatever was written there, being that it was divinely inspired, which I'd ask you and you affirm, that means what's written there is right and exact. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so if the psalmist is calling the king God because the king operated as God's authority in the earth. Matter of fact, let's, let's get another verse so you can see what That's we That's not what it says. About. So you, you, you just added to the text. That's not what okay, the text says. So tell me what the text says then. The text just said that they were, they were so happy that they worshiped the king and they worshiped God. That's just- No, 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 no. That's, that's first, that's first okay. chronicle. Okay, so 45. Yeah, Psalm okay. 45. What's, what's number? It's talking about the king. Okay. Verses, verses six and seven. Who do you believe this king is? Who was the king at the time? It doesn't specify okay. what king it was. Tell me, tell me which king's throne is forever. David. No, it's not. David died, and he, and, and his throne was passed. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You mean okay? So let's 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 move on. Let's, yeah, let's I'm, gonna give you, I'm gonna give you Jeremiah where it hold says. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Let's stay right here, right quick. We're not gonna bow. Yeah. Let's address this. It says, right. "Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of thy kingdom. A right. I mean, yeah, a scepter of thy kingdom. A right scepter." Thou lovers righteousness and hates wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with oil of gladness above all fellows. Tell me which king is above all fellows, first of all. Tell me which king reigned forever. And then, yeah, okay. that's, those are my two questions. All right, no problem. So in this in this context that we're reading, yeah. this is what the writer believed in regards to the king. Based on the so covenant. Of, wait, hold on, I'm, I'm about to answer your question. Based on the covenant that was made with David, the Most High made a covenant with David that He will establish His kingdom forever. Did He not? Yes or no? No. Okay, so let me get the verse for you. He says, but what? It, no, He says that He will establish His kingdom forever from His womb, from His loins. I mean, the, the the king, the king that will be established forever will come from your loins. I'll give you that. I'll get you that verse. That, that's that's what that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's David's so throne. Wait, is David's Jesus going to be on David's throne? Huh? Is Jesus going to sit on David's throne to rule? No. 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 Okay. No. So, so he's not the branch written about in Jeremiah chapter thirty-one. It's not David's throne. It's it's God. It's the Father's throne. When is it? Where is it? Where is it called the Father's throne? Revelation. Okay, bring that up. Let me see where it's called the Father's throne. Okay. Mm hmm. Give me one second. No problem. And I appreciate this, man. I love this. Yo, I, I love this you, bro. Yeah. Bro, I want you too, man. All right, let's look at it. Uh -huh. Bore, as you get that verse, the my prospect, do you be around Times Square? Hey, you want to ask a question, JP, while I look it up too? If you want to, go ahead now. Oh, yeah, no, 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 because I, uh, I see a bunch of Hebrew Israelites in Times Square. Every time I walk there, but I don't know if that's your group because there's different Hebrew Israelites when I go to Times Square, and some of yeah, them man. are in different sets. So I don't know if you be there. No, so me, um, I'm located in Atlanta. I used to live in New York, but I moved out here in 2013, and I oh, publicly identified as Israelite in 2014. So my organization, ministry organization, is called Kingdom Harbinger Ministries, or KHM for short. So we're not a camp, right? So you're not going to see us on a street corner. What did you um, believe before? What, I, what did I believe before that? Yeah. Oh, before um, well, I, I had a transition. So when I first came into the truth, I was uh, uh, holiness. Um, and then from holiness, I transitioned from that to- holiness, that genogenic stuff? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. So I was holiness and then I transitioned from that to uh, a form of conditional Calvinism. And then from there, I transitioned into um, what I would call uh, Messianic Judaism. And then I paused. Uh, I looked into the conscious community a little bit, and then from there, I transitioned to where I'm at currently, which is identifying as an Israelite. Amen. Yeah. So I don't throw shade on my past. I learned a lot, and Christianity grew me to be who I am today. You know, so I don't I don't have any issues with Christianity. It's just that certain things that are taught, I believe, are presuppositions that yeah. cannot be validated. And if you go back and look at the provenance of a lot of these ideas, we can find the source of it, and it's not the scriptures. That's all. Like I, I mean, did it, you, right? you're talking to the right one now because you're wrong, and I'll and I'll show you why. Yes. Revelation. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so Revelation three twenty one. All right, go ahead. It says, um, um, "To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit on. I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as also as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne." So we all going to sit on the same throne as Jesus. It's uh so this you know you know it's allegory. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> wait, wait. So if it's so, my brother, if it's hyperbole, 
yeah. allegory, figurative, or symbolic, then he's not sitting on the literal throne of, of the Most High, then, right? This is revelation, though. Yeah, but did you hear what I said, my brother? Yeah, no, but he's in he's in the position of the. That's even better. He's in the same position as the <laughs> Most High, which makes him God. Wait, wait, let's read it again. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> okay. out, right? I will grant him to sit on with me on my throne, even as I overcame and I sit on my father's throne. So if he's sitting on the father's throne, who's in control? You said who's in control? Yeah. Who has who has been granted all authority? Who who, who has been granted all judgment? Yeah, but I don't disagree with that. So can we be judged by a human being? Would God let us be judged by a human being? I mean, God has been using human beings to judge man forever. To judge our souls? You said our souls? No, that's different, yeah. though. Hallelujah. So Jesus is going to judge yeah. our souls according to the word of God, which you believe, because you're Hebrew Israelite. Mm -hmm. so now you have to exegete that for me. If if, no if, if Jesus, um, another matter of fact, if Jesus is just God, I mean, if Jesus is not God, he doesn't have the authority to um, send us to hell or not. But the Bible says he does. Okay, so here's my question for you, right? Um at what point did Jesus receive his divinity? Uh, he was always divine. What does what does always mean? Also, so look, uh, he's always existed as a as three persons in the God as a second person in the Godhead. He always. Can you show me a verse uh, that proves the ontological trinity somewhere? The ontological one is the which one? That's the one where they have a relationship before the foundation of the world. Absolutely. Um, All right, I'll wait for that one. So a relationship, or that he existed. The fact uh, that he's uh, uh, a relationship, right? Is that good I would, enough? I would say both. If you can show me something that demonstrates both, or any okay. any any of your um your associates as well. Okay. Um. With it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go to this one first. Well, well just um logically, uh, so God is love, right? So if if God was only by himself. Who who would he love? How would he love? Um, Wait, does he need so somebody? God loves, yeah, yeah, so that's God loves, God loves Jesus. Yeah, Jesus Jesus loves the Holy Spirit. God is Holy love. Spirit loves yes, God. Love. So they all love each other. Yeah, that's true. I hate that doctrine. Hey, divine, I don't I don't agree with that doctrine. Doctrine is trash. Me um, either. <laughs> yeah, God is love. He is love. Just like no, no his shame, skin. Though. His skin. He but is how can he... it's love. He doesn't need anything to love. That means he's dependent on something. He doesn't need anything to love. He just is. No, he doesn't love. have to. I'm saying. But he's he's love. But how how can you show love, or you can't show love if you're by yourself? Can you love yourself? The essence of love. So we have to transfer it. He doesn't have to. He is it. That's that's his existence. And when you read the Greek, it says that it's it's an existence. That's what he is. It's in his nature. It's fabric. You know what I'm saying? So so we reflect his love to each other. But he is the source of it. Amen. Right? Yes. Yeah. He's the source. But so. So electricity is electricity, right? Yeah, no, it's before exist, right, lightning is going to exist. Before eternity, of how we use that for our love Jesus, Jesus loved the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit loved God. They were they Show loved each other for. It's just not in the Bible. Give me scripture. Give me scripture for that. We believe it's not in the Bible. Give me scripture. Well, it says God is love. <laughs> that so how can you how can you love? Is love? That's not right, right, Take your phone. You know, to God, to God, love is not an act. Brother God. Divine, give me one second. Yeah, sorry, check your phone, brother. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go to uh, Daniel. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I see somebody's used, somebody in the chat is saying uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse what? What's that? Uh, let us make man in our own image. Where it says, let us make man. Yeah, I, I never go there. That's not good, man, because you got to learn Hebrew. When you learn Hebrew, that has nothing to do with a trinity. And if you go to Job chapter 38 and verse 4 to 7, it explains what that is right there. And that's just a person for the chat while my brother Dore, JP, sleepy in the building while he <laughs> finds the scriptures. <laughs> so, Joe, I'm waiting on your scripture. If you can find yeah. one where it shows so, that. Uh, so you don't Son believe that Jesus and, and is God Father or you do? Love. Huh? So, so okay, you don't so, believe uh, Jesus God or you do? You don't. No, I, so my, here's my position, right? Uh, a person who subscribes to the Trinity believes that Jesus is the second person of the Godhead, right? That he is a person and he's a distinct person from the from the spirit and from the father, but he shares the same substance, homoousia. They come from the same source, the same substance, right? And that 
He was a pre-existent person who is part of the Godhead that makes up God. It's not three gods. It's one God and three persons, and they share the same essence or the same nature. All right? They just have different roles, right? So yeah. So that, that second person of the Godhead then came and transitioned into flesh, right? We see that in John chapter 1. Yeah. And, so, and, and that's why the virgin birth exists, because he didn't need the the a cooperation of a man in order to come about, right? So that's that's the trinity of the second person of God had Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't subscribe to that, but I understand it, right? But so that's what do you believe idea. then? So look, I'm gonna go for the, I'm gonna go to the easy one first. But right, I'm cool. Go to so you already know. I already know what you're gonna say. But still, in the beginning was in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Say was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. That's a relationship. So if you go that's to Daniel, word. Amen. Right. Divine so utterance. You go, to, you go to Daniel three twenty five. All right, hold on. Daniel three twenty five. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Daniel three twenty five. All right, we here. Okay, so he said, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Okay. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Um, so that shows you that Jesus was always here, he was always like, wait wait wait, 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 slow down, Dore. How okay. is this Jesus? Where you where you see this is Jesus? Okay, who is it then? What you mean? It's some kind of entity there. So wait, 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 wait. So wait, wait, wait. wait. Some some random entity came and saved I'm, some some Hebrews. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you, my brother. Let's go to Job chapter one. Come on, my brother. You should know this. Okay. Let's go to Job chapter. Matter of fact, let's go to Job chapter thirty-eight and verse seven. Okay, let's do it. Let's, let's go to Job thirty-eight and verse seven, my brother. Come on, okay. let's go. All right. So here it is, right here. All right. It says. Uh, well, I saw that verse four. Where were you? And this is the Most High God talking to Job. Mm -hmm. When I laid the foundation of the earth, tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? And what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So when we see in Daniel, Daniel that you just mentioned, you said chapter three, verse 25. It says one like a son of God. One of the sons of God is these entities that are there in the heavenly realm. Okay. We see this right here. He sent one of them down and they rescued the Hebrew boys. This is nothing about Jesus. Um, this is not a messianic text. It's not using any messianic language because we have other versions. Of so divine prospect, divine prospect. Yeah. to be fair, that doesn't help your argument either because we don't know for sure that it was one of those sons of God. Hey, bro, thing. bro, bro. Hey, let me do this, bro. I, I'm nice. You, let, me, got let, let, let me explain. Let me explain why I do this, because you're going to take the conversation somewhere that I don't want it to go. I know exactly what I'm doing and where I'm trying to take it. When you guys jump in and say this and that, you take it somewhere else. You know what I mean? So if you're going to ask a question, try to ask it in line with what we're talking about. You know what I mean? And um, amen. So you said Daniel is not a prophecy. No, I didn't say that. But you said there's no prophetic language. There's no mention of the no, Messiah. No, 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 no. I said no messianic language. In okay. Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. That's what I said. Okay. Daniel is a prophet. And, and you're and, saying the and, son of man, right? Correct. It's, so it's just I, an angel. I give you an example, right? Check check this out. So okay. so a, 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 so a, um so a definitive article. So a definite article is what? What is a definite article? You tell me. Come on, man. It points to something specific, right? Yeah. And an indefinite article is something that could be anything, correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's get Daniel chapter 7. I'm going to show you. We're going to use the same author. Let's get Daniel chapter 7. Okay. But, however, like are you, you, you are going to acknowledge that 3, 5 says the Son of God, right? And this one says the Son of God. The Son okay, of wait, God, wait, right? Wait, let me go back there. You said Daniel the chapter... Son of God, right? It's different okay, from Sons of God. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me grab it. You said Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, right? Yeah. All right, let because me get it. Give me one the, second. The language matters, yeah? Yes, I agree. I, you, you're absolutely correct. Let me take okay. a look. All right, so it says... Um, it says... Uh, Rebia dame lebar elahim. So this is in Aramaic. It says lebar, which means uh, to a son of God. The the the, the yeah. It could be it could be sons of the gods. It could be the son of God. Well, yes, because elahim is plural in, in Aramaic, right? Yeah. But it says here lebar. This, you don't have ha there, which is the definite article. It says labar, like a son of God. The is not there, right? So I, so that's why I was going to try to give you an example in Daniel chapter 7, okay. where a lot of times our King James Bible translates it as the son of God, and that's not what the text is saying. It's not there in, in the Aramaic, right? So in, in Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to go to verse 
Uh, let me pull it up for you. We're going to go to verse uh, 13. And it says, I saw in the night visions, um, and behold, with the clouds of heaven. Actually, let me read it in King James. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, right? So here you would think, we're reading the King James or the New King James. It says, read, uh, hey, can, you, can you read 4, 13 and 14? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. You said 7, 13 and 14? Yeah, read 14. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, uh, so 14 says, um, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Who is that? If that's not Jesus, who is it? I mean, it doesn't say Jesus here, but he Jesus fits that profile. So, so it, I would is the best candidate from, from, from what we know. Amen. And is this divinely inspired also, Daniel? Of course it is, my brother. Yes, Hallelujah. it is. So, so once wait, again, wait. Would, God, would God direct us to worship a human being? Again. To worship a human being as the creator? No, of course not. No, no, at all, brother, at all. A, you show, as, just show me one Bible verse where God condones the worship of anything else besides him. I just showed you one. And no, you, you show me. You, you show me the people in error, bro. Oh, that wait, was wait, the people. Wait, 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 show wait. me where God says, "Yeah, I approve." My brother, of my brother, you said that people are in error. However, David was praying and speaking to the Most High in that same chapter. How are the so people what? in error? The people were no, bro. I, I prayed before, then masturbated. What does that mean? I'm a wait, human what? being. I fall short. You you you're equating per, you're equating perfect um attributes to human beings, kind of. Wait, human wait, beings wait, wait, my brother, work. my brother. Yeah. All right, how did I do that? Because you're you're saying because these people worship God, God approved of it. That's not what the Bible says. They worshipped and prostrated. I mean, sorry, they worshiped David. Show me where God approved of it, though. So, so his approval is the fact that if you keep reading the rest of the verses, nothing happened. It was not shunned. So so this so would you agree? There's instances where when a person bows down to worship another entity, the entity says, like in the Book of Revelation, oh, don't do that. I'm one of your brothers, so don't worship me. Don't bow down before me. Who said that? Before God. Who Matter said of fact, that? Let's, no, let's, wait, let's, wait. Divine, let's who said that? Oh, no, I'm going to give, give you a verse. Let's go to Judges no. chapter 10. Divine, chapter who said 10. that? No, no, you just quoted the verse. Who said it? That's who in the book that? of Revelation. But who said it? Wait, okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. Some entity could be it, no, it just, a messenger. <laughs> so wait, wait. Hold on. Hold so on. The angel, the, uh, angel said it, right? Okay. Uh, did, did, uh, okay, some, some entity. Did God say it? Did God say it? Did God say it? Yeah. What don't worship me? Yeah. Nah, no, of course not. Did no, did God say get up? Don't don't worship an angel, don't bow down. Did God say that? Yeah. Nah, I don't I don't think a God said that. So God didn't correct him there either. An angel had to correct him. That's what I'm trying to say. God, you you you're equating God. You don't you don't understand God's character, I don't think. Because you think God automatically corrects you all the way. That's not true. That's I, what I grace never, is. My brother, I never yeah. said automatically correct anything. Okay. Well, let, let, let me ask you a question. Hey, Prost, I'm going to ask you a question, then yeah. I'm going to be quiet. I just, so, I, so I get some understanding. Um, are you saying this? Are you saying that, okay, this is what I hear, and then you tell me tell me, tell me, me where I'm in error. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's almost like you're saying that because God didn't correct the Jews for worshiping David, that he was cool with it. Uh... I guess if that's what you want to say, all, all I'm simply trying to show you is that kings were considered God and the people bowed down and paid homage to them because that was customary in the ancient Near East. They're not worshiping that person like they're the creator. They are paying homage to them because they represent the creator's power and authority here on the earth. Can you show me a Bible verse that says that? That says which part? Just what you said, that 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 is OK to show reverence or whatever to that God I, says it's OK to show reverence or whatever to a human being like you show to God. Yeah, you because, keep saying. OK, so he's God representative. OK, gotcha. So you keep saying to me where God said, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. Yeah, because if God is displeased, he'll let you know. Uh, exactly. So therefore, he would have corrected people who's doing this, right? Absolutely. OK, so let's get Exodus chapter seven. All right. Exodus and due time. Seven, verse one. Wait, wait. Uh, in due time. That's what I'm trying to say. Remember, I told you they got sold into slavery and eventually they were punished for ser not only serving him, but serving other gods. OK, but just All like right. the nation served of the gods as well. What Ooh. nation? Wait, well, name one ideal nation. There is no ideal nation. OK, there you go. So you're always going to have a remnant in every nation. Correct. Yeah. But look, so I think we got so this. Is, let me let me let me let me let me rewind. Sure. This is what I'm saying. Just because because God approved because God didn't shun them right away. Let, let, matter of fact, I'm gonna give you an old proverb that I read in the in the Talmud. Okay, the cool. Ta the Talmud says this. It says that 
you know justice is this if you cheat um if you cheat on someone matter of fact let me get it real quick wait, wait, so give, us, give us the give us the um the direct quote the citation yeah, yeah. one second one second i'm gonna, get, I'm gonna okay. get take your time so while, while he's doing that i'm just gonna read this for y'all while he's doing that um and and he doesn't I'm have just, to respond so i'm just gonna put it on record unless one of you guys have something you want i'm just trying to figure out what what do you believe you said what? like what do you believe because you said mm -hmm. you said what the Trinitarian. He's the he, he's the Hebrew Israelite brother. Yeah, yeah. He said he's, he's but, a Hebrew. Israelite. So what do you believe about Jesus? So my position on Yeshua is that he was brought into sonship, and when he was brought into sonship at his baptism, he became divine by way of the Spirit, and then through that he was chosen and utilized in order to redeem the nation of Israel from their sins. And as a byproduct of the Israelites rejecting him, the door was opened up for the Gentiles to cleave and come into the fold and receive salvation. That's my position. So I did. So I, I don't disagree that Yeshua was divine. I just disagree that he preexisted in some other form. The word always was here. The divine utterance always existed. You said that he preexisted in another form? Correct. Okay. Wait, so you believe that he always existed just in another form? No, I believe that the word always existed, the divine utterance, and then that became flesh. So, so the, the word always existed? Man. Yeah, the word is always, the word always existed. Is the word yes, the same we, as the Father? You said what? Is the word the same as the Father? It's his, it's his word. It's an extension of him. But are they the same thing? Of course. It's, it's, it's an extension of him. So your so word I, I, is I, you? Here's a, here's a good example, right? Yeah. You, you ever seen hand puppets? Yeah. Okay, so a hand puppet, if I put my hand in the puppet, right, the hand is me, right, and you hear my voice, the puppet is only speaking what I say, and it's only doing where I move it. Well, that hand is the word, and that flesh is Jesus Christ, the man, you know, the mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. That's, so you're that's, saying God's that's, word is like a sock puppet? No, 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 no. His, his word so, is the hand. So if, so, <laughs> okay, so if God just takes off the sock puppet and throw it, there's no more word? No, 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 no. The word is the hand. The puppet is Jesus. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's deep. And guess what? After after the death, burial, and resurrection, that hand become one with that flesh. So that hand and that puppet is always the same. Like, like what's his name from WWE? Mankind. Mankind? <laughs> Have a nice day. Right? <laughs> you got to bring some humor, man. Some people might be falling asleep, man. It's kind of late. But but okay. seriously, um, go ahead. You got that Talmud? Yeah, so, yeah, so I got this is uh, from the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud. All right, awesome. And just so you know, everybody, you can follow along on safaria.org uh, and you can follow uh, the verse that uh, he's about to say. Okay, yeah, this is chapter four, uh, second paragraph. So All right. this, they asked the rabbi about, it's a, it's a philosophy, the rabbis, are, I'm just going to read it. The rabbi taught some philosophers. Um, the rabbis taught, some, philosopher, some philosophers asked the elders in Rome, if God doesn't want idols worship, why doesn't he destroy them? They replied, if people, um, if but then he replied, if people worship useless things, he would destroy them. But people worship the sun, they worship the moon, they worship the stars, they worship the constellations. Should he destroy them? Should he just should he destroy all of those? Of course not. His uh should he just should he destroy the whole world because of fools? Of course not. But the world continues on its course, and the fools have been and the fools who have abused it will face judgment. Another explanation: if someone stole a cease a sheesh of wheat and sold it in the ground, justice dictates that it should not grow. But the world continues on its course, and the fools who have abused it will face judgment. Another explanation. If someone slept with another man's wife, justice dictates that she should not become pregnant. But the world continues on its course, and the fools who have abused it will face judgment. So even regardless, it was wrong for them to, to uh, worship David, and fools <laughs> will receive judgment. So in that same Talmud, show me a reference on the Gemara, the, the Gemara where there's a discussion about First Chronicles 2920, where they say that that action was shunned. It's not even in the oral tradition. Um, it was so that it was shunned by God. That it was shunned. Yes. OK, that's that's easy. The Bible says if God says have no other gods before me and you're worshiping something else, if he says don't bow down and don't worship and you do it, that tells you right there that they're in the wrong. I don't even have to just oh. go to Exodus 20. Wait, wait. So, so go to give me Exodus twenty. Go ahead. Okay. okay. I was trying. To, I was. I got Exodus seven one. I wanted to read it, but I was waiting for you to come back. Okay. 
can 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 the most high make somebody god can the most high no there is no there's only one god so i'm saying can he make somebody a god he can make them like a god but no there's only one god like a god meaning can he make someone have authority like he said to moses he said hey look aaron you'll be like god and aaron will be like a prophet but like and like is basically he's making an example he's saying just like just like uh he was explaining something so moses could understand but he didn't he never once said moses you're a god or uh aaron you're a god all right so check it out so okay. exodus 7 and exodus 71 and yahweh said to moshe see i have made you god to pharaoh and mm. aaron your brother shall be your prophet so there in the hebrew it says why your man yahweh el moshe re -e, that means to see netatika that means I have made you Elohim. There's no like. Like mm. would, be the, would be the prefix kaf, which means like. Okay. Like you're not there. He says, see, I have made you God, mm. ne part o, to Pharaoh. I've made you God to Pharaoh. Okay. I've made you God to Pharaoh, not like a God, because that's inserted in the English translations. It's not there in the Hebrew. I've made you God to Pharaoh. So he can um, make it powerful to represent him in the earth to other beings. Okay. Other people. I'm just saying. I mean, so, so the, the word, situation works. You said Exodus what? Exodus 20? Let's go mm -hmm. to 20. All right. So we have Exodus 20. All right. And what verse are you going to? We, uh, verse 3? Uh, yeah. All right. So verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so if he's at, carry on though. No, no, I was gonna say. So he said, "You should have no other gods before me, right?" Mm -hmm. Al Panaya, which means before my face, mm -hmm. something that's right here looking at me, right? Nothing should be competing with me. So I agree. Mm -hmm. Nobody. So what I'm saying is, and check me out. What I'm saying, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that anybody that prostrated before a king is worshiping the king like they're the creator, like they're greater than the Most High, like they are the Most High. They're that's doing what the this. Said. No, no, okay. You just they, read the scripture and you put and you conjunction that they was worshiping as if he was equal to God. So that's no, exactly I what I didn't say the word equal to God at all. I didn't say that, my brother. Okay, I, said, I said, can the king of Israel be considered a God? That's all I asked. Okay, what do you okay? Booyah. So what do we mean? What do you mean by a God? So one that has power and authority in earth that represents the most highs, the man in the earth. One more time. The okay. definition of God, okay. one more time. So, okay, so just, no, no, I'm talking about in, yeah. in that sense, right? Yeah, I know. I just want it has, it has to compute. I process stuff. Just say it one more time, please. No problem. Okay. Uh, are you where, where are you originally from, Doray? Um, out here. I'm from I'm from Vancouver, but I was raised out there. Okay, because you talk like you're from New York. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I talk fast. Um, nah, so um, so I'm saying so a God is an authority, it's a it's an entity that has authority and power, right? An entity. An entity, yeah, correct. So the word God is always associated with an entity? Of course. Where where is it not associated with an entity? Unless you're going to talk about idols? You referring to idols? No, I'm 82, Psalms 82, 1. Oh, let's go there. That's the divine council. Let's grab yeah. it. All right, Psalms 82 and 1. All right, you want to read it or want me to read it? Um, go ahead, you got it. All right. It says, God has taken his place in the divine council. This is the ESV version. Mm -hmm. um, in the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. Okay. How do you, what do you think that, what do you, how do you interpret that? So uh, are you, are you familiar with Michael Heiser's work? No, I mean, I, I might be, I just might not know his name. No problem. Okay. So he, he, ex, he's a Christian, right? So it's a, it's a non-biased source. He's a Christian and he expounds on the divine council. One thing that he does agree on with other ancient areas and scholars is that pre-exile, this is referring to the most high and a divine council, meaning other entities. And I'm gonna show you elsewhere where these entities show up. You see it in Psalms and we see it in Kings, right? And- Wait, he's talking about what? So the most high is sitting amongst other powers. No, but you're calling these people entities, meaning spirits or angels. Yeah, they're not They're, they're not angels either. They're other powers and other entities. They're why do not you believe people. that? You said what? Why do you believe that? You said, why do I believe that? Yeah uh excellent question i don't know if i have a lot of time to expound tonight okay. uh i did a whole lecture series on this but the reason why is because when you look at the language it's not just in here it's in other parts of psalms where it says mm -hmm. that he takes his his place amongst the other gods and what god is greater than him there's several verses in psalms that talk about that right 
Yeah. Uh, but here, this is referring to in this context about what's called the divine council. We see that also in the book of Kings, where um, he's saying, who shall go for us? Right. And, you know, you see the host on his left, host on the right, murmuring amongst each other. And then the spirit shows up and says, I will be a lying spirit. And so there's a, there's a host that are, of other entities that are there with him in this heavenly realm of the vision that this prophet Makai was looking at. Can they die? No, they can't die. So then you're then if you go to number five, that can't be entities. It's gotta be a human being. You said five? Show me where five says death. 82.5. 82 5 says they it says they have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundation of earth are shaken. That has nothing to do with death. Hold on. You mean verse six? Oh, yep. There you go. Seven. Yeah. Okay, it says, I said you are no, God. Six and seven, yeah. Yeah, I said, you are gods, sons of the most high, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince, right? So so, who, so check it out, check it out. So, so what do you see? No, no, check it out. So when you look at verse six, what do you see there that's different from the verses above it? If you just look at punctuation. Mm -hmm. If you look at punctuation, what do you see that's different there? The semicolon? The, uh, semicolon, no, but the quotation mark. So after the quotation this, marks are mine. <laughs> oh, what, 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 what you reading from? What version? King James. Okay, so let me go to King James so I can follow you. Okay. Uh, King James. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're right. It's not. It's not the King James. <laughs> all right. So, so, so I'll read it. So it says, "I've said, ye are gods. All of you are children of the Most High." It's different from the council or the gods as used in verse one. One is children of the Most High, and the one in verse one says, "Gods." Two different words there. They're not the same words. What so does the word "gods" mean in Hebrew, bro? You said, "What does the word gods mean here?" Elohim. Yeah. Elohim no. can be Elohim. Elohim can be, doesn't mean God. That's just that's something else. My brother, Elohim does mean gods, plural. Elohe is the singular of that, and then you yeah. have El, right? right? So Elohim means gods, plural, unless it's used in a majestic plural form, which Amen. is used like a I would say a um, collective noun, like the word team or mm -hmm. corporation, right? Yeah. So Elohim, and we're talking about linguistically, is a is a is a third person masculine plural. It's, it means gods, plural, but mm -hmm. it can be used in the singular sense depending upon the verb. And a good mm -hmm. example of that is Genesis chapter one, verse one, where it says, "Bara Elohim, He created gods, the heavens and the earth." Hashemayim ve'et ha'eret, right? So Bara is a third person singular, singular, but the as a verb, but the noun that follows it is a third person masculine plural. So you have a plural noun and a singular verb. In Hebrew, the verb person, gender, and number should match the noun. But in that now case, it's about the, that's how they discover the what, what, what about the what about the superlatives? Okay, what about the superlatives? Um the superlatives could mean um judges. Okay, so now this is what I'm getting into talking mm -hmm. about these what's called Second Temple Judaism, mm -hmm. where now they started to translate this to mean judges, like you just said, mm -hmm. right? And we and there's there's tons. If you read the Talmud, you'll see it. The conversations in there in the Gemara, right? Yeah, we so, got You got to consider the source though when you when you read the Talmud. They didn't like Jesus, so they're gonna. They, I know but the Talmud also calls Jesus a, a madman and a magician. Let's slow down for a second. You okay. also read from the Talmud as if it was inspired. You use that as no, a source to try and prove your point earlier. No, 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 I didn't read for like it was inspired. Just like, just like in the book of wait, uh, wait, so why'd you read it? Oh, bro, just like in the book of Acts, right, where 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 Paul referenced there a different text to make a point. Correct, a Greek text. Uh huh. Yeah, but I didn't say it was divinely inspired. It's not even of God. It's of Satan. <laughs> yes, but you but you read from it, my brother, and you told yeah. me when I referenced it. Hold on, you told me when I referenced it. Oh, you gotta be careful. But you too, oh. you read from the Talmud earlier. I never said you have to be careful. When I was there. Okay, what did you just say to me about the Talmud just now? It's not divinely inspired. No, and what else did you say? You said you have to be careful and check your source when it comes no, to no, Talmud. I never said that. Hey. No, 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 I never said that. I said, all I said was, it's not divinely inspired. And and in, in the book of Acts, Paul used an, an, an extra biblical source to make a point. And that's what I was doing. I was using an extra biblical source to make a point. But it's of Satan. So you use a, a satanic source to make a point about something righteous we were talking about. Yes, I did. And and the Bible does it too. And I can show you that verse. <laughs> sure, give it to me. Okay. <laughs> I would love to see this, my brother. Wow, you are awesome. I didn't know you was this good in person, my brother. <laughs> 
All right. That's so, oh, so you know, Dore, I'm about to, I'm about, I'm about, uh, uh, tap out in about five minutes. Okay. So you know, but I, I just, before I go, if I get cut off, I want to say thank you for your time, my brother. I appreciate this. I would love to build with you elsewhere. I learned while talking with you. Um, and, and thank you for having me on because you didn't have to do it, right? You could have just ignored it. But it was a pleasure being on here, my brother. And I never got to meet you before, even when I was up there. Never got to see you. I think you wasn't, you didn't come out that day. With I don't know. But when you, you was up here? Attention, yeah, this was uh, oh, okay. about four or five years. It was a while ago. Wow. Um, and, and, and you wasn't there where you normally preach at, um, outside. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Maybe one day I'll catch the brother in person. And lo and behold, I got the opportunity to build with you on your live, man. Don't praise him on time. Don't tell me the right, most. Huh? He answers prayer, man. This is answered prayer right now. <laughs> Yo, bro, that's true. Love my brother. But go ahead. So um, so what I would like to do is if, if you don't mind, yeah, just give me your final word to me in regards to your position on Trinity. I'll give mine and I'll just buy out. I want to make sure it's respectful. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And so people can see that even as an Israelite and as a Christian, this is how we need to build and talk with one another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my point is that one is to well, my point is that yeah. so a, a lot of a lot of times when we when with the Bible we don't use common sense we kind of read with like these divine eyes right like oh God is so good but we don't like break it down and lose, and use logic. I just think logically speaking, right? If 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 God is a jealous God and we know who God is, God God would never appoint at any given time a regular man for us to worship. So therefore, um, just if I use just my common sense and my understanding of who God is and how jealous He is, he, even one of His name is jealous, I don't believe that He would um, He would um, He would exalt someone to be worshiped that was not him or that was not God in essence. And that's why I, I, I uh, and I was oneness at first, but and that's why I believe in the Trinity because it's all you that makes sense. Are, are you a Calvinist? No, heck no. So are you Armenian? What, what are heck you? No. I'm Dore. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> this, this is what I don't like. It's be, just yeah. because that, that guy was the first, those two were the first people to argue something. Now we got to be called that. No, heck no. Mm -hmm. Because I I, I I I believe a little bit of the what the Calvinists say. I believe a little bit what the Armenians say. So you know what I mean. Oh, because okay. whatever's in the Bible, I believe. If I can, you know how I how how I believe the Bible has been revealed to me. You know what I mean. Yeah, so so my apologies. I don't mean to categorize you. It's just that I think people do that to better understand somebody's position, so they know how to kind of like reason with them. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? So I, yeah. I didn't mean that in any derogatory manner. I was just trying to. You know, try to understand. Yeah. So yeah, if 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 you if you just just so just for point of reference, so you, so we can we can conversate better. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of I, I I believe that we're chosen, but I believe we're chosen according to His foreknowledge, and I believe and I believe um that God chooses us, but everyone can be saved, and that's why Jesus came into the world. Calvinists don't believe that, and I, okay. I don't believe and I believe I don't believe everything is God's will. They believe dead babies is God's will, cancer. I believe that the Bible says that um it's not His will that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of the truth. So I believe God has a permissive will, and a perfect will. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and you believe in the original sin as well, correct? Um, not in the way the Catholics present it, but yeah, I believe that we're we're all born in sin. Born in sin. Yeah, I, so I believe we're born with a sin nature. With a sin nature. So if a baby yeah. dies, it goes to hell. No, so I believe God is just, and I believe that um, I believe that you you only you only held accountable. Even the Bible says you only held accountable for what you know. Babies don't know anything, so they get a free pass. Okay, I see what you Calvinists saying. don't believe that. <laughs> no, and, they, and they're gonna crucify you after this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, nah, but that's it, man. I'm good. All I wanted to say is, no, I want, um, I, uh, yeah, Rob, I want to know your point though, too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 no problem. Okay. So, okay. all I want to say is, um, um, you know, my position, and again, I represent myself and my organization, Kingdom Harbinger Ministries. I'm out Kingdom, here, say it again, brother. Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Harbinger, H A R B I N G E R Ministries. Okay. And when you get a chance, that's my actually my YouTube channel as well. So you can go check H out my content. H A, H -A R. Uh, B I N G E R. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna check it yeah, out. And I would love for you to subscribe because seeing your name on it, I'm like, oh, Dore. <laughs> <name." laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but but uh, my so my position is, you know, uh, as a as identified as an Israelite, uh, one thing that I had to consider is that if I identify as an Israelite today, and we didn't really unpack that at all, we were just talking about theology, right? Um, is there any pedigree from my position and a position that occurred about first century CE? So in going in and looking into the research, I found out that there was actually a group that existed and they're called by uh, scholars, Jewish Christians, right? You've heard of Jewish Christians before that term before, right? Mm -hmm. So Jewish Christians were people who subscribed to the law and also subscribed to Jesus as being the Messiah, right? And this was a conundrum to both Christians and Jews, and that's why over time this, this particular third wheel 
got pretty much axed out, where either they were excommunicated, they was absorbed either into Jewish or Christian sects, or they were persecuted, right? So in looking at their position, one major thing, and this is going back into what we're talking about, Jesus Christ and everything, I subscribe to what they subscribe to, which is a doctrine called adoptionism. Now that's called heresy, but what adoptionism is and what can be demonstrated in the scriptures is that when Jesus was baptized, at that time, he was called the son. Listen to my son, or this is my son who I am well pleased, right? And it's at that point in receiving the spirit is when Yeshua or Jesus became divine, right? And then from there, you know, being infused with the word and the spirit without measure, as he says in John chapter three, he was able to do the atoning act on behalf of us, right? And he was, he was buried, as he was crucified, he resurrected on the third day. He arose, and when he arose, he appeared to the disciples, and after he appeared to them in Acts 1, he ascended. And now he's on the right hand, most sign, right hand is an idiom in Hebrew, meaning power and authority, right? So he's been ascended to do that. So I don't subscribe to the virgin birth. I don't subscribe to its pre-existence. I do subscribe to the fact that the divine utterance on the word did pre-exist. I subscribe to the fact that the spirit pre-existed, but I don't subscribe to the fact that Jesus Christ as a person, as he had like walked in the earth, that he pre-existed. Right, but the word did, and I believe that word also manifested as the Melak or the the Melek or the messenger that spoke to Moshe, the messenger that spoke to Manoah and his wife, which is Samson's parents, and that he manifested several times throughout the text, even in Judges chapter one, excuse me, Judges chapter two, where the angel, the Melak, the messenger says, "I'm the one that brought you up out of out of Egypt, and I'm the one who made a covenant with you." The angel. So is he God? The angel is God. Some people say, well, that might be Jesus preexistent. And I'm just saying, you know, we got to examine it further. So that's all I'm saying. So I didn't come on here to be contentious. I really want to build those brothers. I see all of y'all, my brothers at the end of the day. I enjoy these builds because I learn, right? And that's why I have discussions like this with people who are polar opposites because it's an opportunity for me to learn. If I'm around a bunch of yes men, I don't learn nothing. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm around brothers who have a staunch stance on their convictions and their affirmations, I respect that. I learn. And at the end of the day, we all win. And if you need anything from me, my brother, and I can help in any way, you can email me at kingdomharbinger at gmail.com and I'll be here for your aid as well as the other brothers that was on the line. And I love you uh, very much, my brother. Don't wait too, bro. to fight, man. Keep putting that work in the street because I really respect that work that you, you've been doing this for years. Years, man. And even if I disagree with you on a few doctrinal things, I have to respect the footwork you put out in the streets and what you do for the people, right? So keep putting wow. up that good work for the community. Much love, my brother. Thank you for your time. Allow me in your house to speak. And I pray that Mosai has his hand on you as we depart. All right. Amen. Divine. Hey, Divine, quick question. I'm, I'm gonna give you my uh, can I give you my email and can yes, we sir. exchange yes, numbers and let's uh, yes. let's set up a build, just just a build, you know, because I, I have a lot of questions about Hebrew Israelites, to be honest. So maybe we can set up a bill later on next week or something whenever you have time. And uh, you, know, have a, you, okay. you let me know. I'll make time for you. For you, so I'll I, make time for my brother. Hey, brother, I'll make time for you. So my, my oh, email wow. is my name, Love Dore. Love Dore. Huh? Love, L-O-V-E. Uh-huh. D-O-R-R-E, -R -E, Love Dore. Uh-huh. At gmail.com. L-O-V-E, D-O-R-R-E, at gmail.com? Correct. All right, gotcha. All right. Hey, hey Divine, quick question. Hey, yes. do you think anybody, anybody can be saved? Well, I think anybody can be saved. What you mean? Just any any person. You mean, you mean outside of Israelites? Yeah. Yeah, Gentiles can be grafted in. Mm. They so have a role to play in the kingdom. That's another discussion. Divine, but yeah, they can be grafted no, in. that's why you see now. That's why I got a T. That's it. I've never heard that before. <laughs> that's why I got to talk to this brother about the Israelites because I want to yeah, hear. Yeah. I want to hear your perspective on that. No problem. But but, but um, Divine, there was a Hebrew Israelite that I was talking to down in Baltimore because I went to Baltimore and there's quite a few. And this Hebrew Israelite believed Jesus was God. He pre-existed and everything. So it's like I see so many different Hebrew Israelites that it's like I don't, I, it, it's it's like if you learn about one, it's like there's 40 other. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's so the same thing. With, it's the same thing with Christianity. Yeah, there's yeah, denominations, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Even, even in Islam and Judaism, there's correct. Tons you got the Shiites, the Sunnis. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So the good thing is to speak to someone objectively, because what I would do is I will explain to you what their position is and how it um, and be a representative. So any 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 positions outside of mine, I strive to learn it. What Just like I, 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 go ahead. No, I was gonna say what Hebrew Israel are you? So for example. We would say Pentecostals, Calvinists. So what is your Hebrew Israelite uh, 
you know Un uh, underlining doctrine i don't i, I don't it, it wouldn't be categorized of any of those because okay. it's a combination of different things and it would okay. depend on the subject matter like i'll give you an example i don't subscribe to original sin that's the, i don't subscribe to that doctrine i don't subscribe to the virgin birth i don't subscribe to the pre-existence but of some hebrew israelites do yes they do that's correct okay got it got it yep. so wait wait yep. so how do you how, how do you explain you know what? I'll wait because it's you still that. Let me hear what I'm talking about. Let's save that for next time. We're gonna yeah. good build, yeah. David. Yeah, I appreciate good build. the time though, right, man. You you're really good, brother. I'll say one. Let me see if I go on there. He go in on me, but you took your time. You know what I'm saying, my brother? And you was polite, man. And this is this is you laid back because I see. You. I know you turned up. I know you turned up. <laughs> All right, man. So yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, Dory. Like I'm gonna email you right now, my brother, and let's stay in touch, okay? Okay, brother. God bless you, man. Thank you for God coming on.